Today I'd like to talk with you about fear, about meeting fear. We've been taught to fear fear and even bringing it up as a topic elicits sort of a subtle charge. Quite a few years ago, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross taught that there were two basic emotions, fear and love. Our true nature is love. We come from this love, which is in the form of a undifferentiated, receptive, awareing, open state of consciousness. That is our true nature. When we're born as babies, we still exist in that state of undifferentiated consciousness. When we're unhappy, we cry. When we're hungry, we cry. When we're happy, we may poo. When there's a toy that we want, we reach out for it. It's all happening automatically. There's no real separation from us and the world. Then, when we become about the age of two or three, there's a process of identification with self that begins. It comes from the well-intended conditioning that we receive from our parents who want to um, teach us and help us to grow and help us to be able to live in this culture. So they begin to say, your name is Wendy. You're, uh, you're a girl. They define, begin to define us as a separate self. They say, um, this is a good behavior and this is bad behavior. At this point, we become aware of separation, that we're no longer in that undifferentiated state. And we perceive this as a sense of loss. We wonder if we'll ever be able to, uh, let's say, regain Eden, if we're, we can ever be restored to that unified state. It begins to bring up Fear. All fear arises from this root fear of separation. And the mind, at the core of the mind, is fear. It's almost like we're hamsters on the exercise wheel that's endlessly turning and going, this is the wheel of the mind's fear. We tend to get sort of addicted to fear because it has an adrenaline rush. And there's an associated drama with it. There's something in that that makes us feel a little special. Fear wears other masks um, because fear is at the base of all emotion. It wears the mask of anger, resentment, worry, jealousy, uh, and on. But the truth is that fear lies at the core of all these emotions. We live in a culture of fear. Every night when we watch the evening news, we're bombarded with fearful scenarios, whether they're uh, landslides in California or um, shootings, massacres, earthquakes. And the mind with its core of fear tends to project ourselves into these scenarios. So we're always living with a, a low level anxiety about just being out in life. So our system through fear and anxiety lives in a state of neurological arousal. Lately, I've been observing the current popularity of horror movies or disaster movies. It's almost as if we're attracted uh, to the very things that we fear. Another way the mind has of coping with fear is through avoidance. When we avoid a fearful thought or, or a fearful memory, what happens is the mind tends to very subtly uh, hold a sense of failure or of guilt for leaving the truth of our experience. 
this leads to uh, a lessening of our own self-confidence and increases our level of anxiety that we hold. Our fears can grow by becoming attached to other similar scenarios uh, to the one that elicited the current fear in the moment. And as a result, when we're avoiding fear, our world gets smaller and smaller. I don't want to leave you with the impression that fear is our enemy. It's also a friend. Appropriate fear helps to keep us safe in this 3D world that we live in. It leads us to protective actions. But the most important thing I'd like you to keep in mind is the idea that we are so loved by the one that even fear is a gift. It affords us the opportunity to turn towards the ground of our being. When fear is recognized as a pointer, we can be in choice and we can choose to meet fear, to turn towards the experience of fear. And this is a sacred turn. Do not underestimate its power. This turn is a result of a call from our highest sacred self. If you're already in a state of fear with its uh, accompanying uh, neurological arousal, it may be best to wait until this arousal calms down. The breath is a gateway for calming our nervous system. When we truly meet the breath at the level of sensation, the mind falls back. Rather than considering fear as your en enemy, give it the respect of welcoming it. You can get in touch with fear by scanning your body and seeing, noticing um, where there might be a contraction or a strong sensation because this is where that fear is stored. Meet it there at the level of sensation outside of judgment. Your breath can help you. Imagine that your breath is a kind of liquid love and that this liquid love can sort of gently cradle that sensation or contraction of fear. And when fear is held in open receptiveness, outside of judgment, there's a softening that can occur. When meeting fear in this way, it's best not to try to force it or require that the experience changes. Instead, hold the experience of fear sensation with acceptance and tenderness. Then with patient curiosity, you can deeply meet the energetic configuration of fear, of the sensation of fear. When openly received, there's room for that sensation to flower, to blossom, as it were. And perhaps it'll change form, or perhaps it will move to another space in the body where fear is stored. But this is a process of liberating your physical system from the contractions that have resulted from undigested fear. As you engage in this process, you'll experience a decrease in neurological arousal. The negative charge that's stored in your system that's associated with fear will slowly be eroded. Eventually, it loses its charge. 
and this creates space for your true nature, fear's opposite, to emerge. Fear will always be with us. It's a part of our evolution. It's a part of our fight flight response that's wired into our brain. It's a part of our humanity. However, turning towards it is liberating. Rather than rejecting this part of our human experience, we can own it. And through owning it, we become more authentic. Meeting fear is part of a paradoxical return to who we really are, that more open, receptive, awareing consciousness that is love. 